magnificent temples, colossal statues, and mighty pyramids. Although the era of the mighty Egyptians has been over for many centuries, the legacy of the inhabitants of the Pharaonic Kingdom still fascinates us today. If you've thought that we've already unlocked all the secrets of this fascinating civilization, you're wrong. Again and again, archaeologists recover new artifacts from the hot desert sand, which bring back the past to life. From secret pyramid chambers, to mystical tombs, to long-lost metropolises, here are some discoveries from Egypt that will amaze us. Before we get started, be sure to hit the like button and ring the notification bell for more great videos. Also, stick around till the end to hear one of the most disturbing and concerning Egyptian discoveries so far. Hidden Chamber It is the year 2017 when a real shock runs through the ranks of the experts. As a modern muron scan revealed, a secret chamber has been hiding in the mighty Cheops Pyramid the whole time. A look at the amazing dimensions show that this is by no means just a small niche. The mysterious cavity is at least 30 meters long. Located above the Great Gallery, the hidden chamber still poses many mysteries. In fact, we do not know what purpose this room once served. But according to the researchers, it is unlikely that there are mummies or valuable treasures here. We may be dealing here with the relic of a ramp on which the heavy blocks of stone were once heaved up. The true background of the discovery, however, resembles a mystery, and it will probably remain so indefinitely. According to this, the experts could not discover access to the secret chamber on their Muran scans, and simply pre-drilling into the cavity could affect the statics of the entire pyramid. Lost Golden City Aside from the impending discovery of the lost Egyptian labyrinth, if we turn back the wheel of time by around 3400 years, we find ourselves in an epic that still puzzles experts to this day. At that time, the pharaoh Akhenaten decided to give up his religion and the former capital in Thebes in order to found the city of Akhenaten and become the city's ruler. There, he ruled together with his wife, Nefertiti, and founded a mysterious sun cult. But what motives could have led the pharaoh to take such a drastic step? The answer to this riddle may be hidden in the ruins of the legendary Golden City, which were rediscovered in September 2020. In light of the astonishingly good state of preservation in which the remains of the magnificent village were found, the entire professional world went into a frenzy upon the discovery. In fact, experts have called the discovery of the city ruins the biggest sensation since the discovery of Tutankhamun's tomb. In detail, the Golden City was built during the reign of Akhenaten's father, Amenhotep III. The epic describes a chapter in which ancient Egypt was in a real heyday. This was a time of extraordinary luxury, wealth, and power. Although the investigation of the site is still in full swing, researchers have already unearthed some incredible artifacts. Jewelry, amulets, ceramics, and countless everyday objects give a foreshadowing of the priceless treasures that may lie within the remains of the Golden City. But the buildings also give us an authentic insight into everyday life at the time. According to this, the archaeologists have already found homes that may have once been occupied by workers, a kitchen, a bakery, administration buildings, and even a burial ground with burial chambers carved directly into the rock. After Akhenaten had turned his back on the flourishing town, for whatever reason, the Golden City seemed to have been used again by Tutankhamun at some point during history. The subsequent ruler must have valued the city which represented the prosperity of his empire so well. In fact, some findings suggest that the town was inhabited until the 7th century AD. The city was then left to its own devices for many centuries, before it recently saw the light of day again. Khufu Ship The Cheops or Khufu Ship gives us a vivid insight into the death cult of the ancient Egyptians. According to the beliefs of the time, Death was by no means the end. It was merely the beginning of the mystical journey that, in the best case, would lead to the attainment of the Kingdom of Heaven. 
In order for the deceased to be able to reach the afterlife, a wide variety of accessories and tools were placed in the grave. This also includes the world-famous Cheops ship, a so-called sun bark, which is one of the best-preserved ships of antiquity. However, when archaeologists rediscovered the ship in 1954 in a sealed pit in Giza, it had been dismantled into all of its individual parts. However, this was not a random heap of rubble. The more than 1,200 individual parts were arranged in a logical order that made it possible to later put the ancient object back together perfectly. Some traces indicate that the boat was actually used for shipping. Possibly, this was done to transport the body of Cheops from Memphis to Giza. In addition, it is conceivable that the powerful pharaoh used the ship during his lifetime to head for sacred places. Particularly interesting, if the Cheops ship were launched today, it would still be fully functional. Opry's Stone The archaeologists invest vast amounts of time and money in their exciting search for clues, and it could be so much easier. According to this, a simple farmer showed last year how quickly things can go. When the farmer in northeast Egypt was busy preparing his land for sowing, he unexpectedly came across an artistically worked sandstone slab, which later turned out to be an artifact from the time of Pharaoh Apries. Accordingly, the 2.3 meter high and a good 1 meter wide stell was made approximately 2,600 years ago. In detail, the object adorned with 15 lines of hieroglyphs, which the experts are now trying to translate. Rosetta Stone It is July 15, 1799, when a French officer manages to recover an ancient artifact in the Nile Delta. According to one story, however, it wasn't the military commander who tracked down the landmark object, but his horse. This had stumbled over the structure because it was half sticking out of the ground. Whatever the case, it is clear that we owe a lot to the so-called Rosetta Stone. As part of an inscribed tablet, the find made a significant contribution to the decoding of ancient Egyptian hieroglyphs. This is mainly due to the fact that the text is available in three different versions, in hieroglyphs, in Demotic script, and in Greek. In detail, the tablet was made in such a way that it could be deciphered by three population groups. The hieroglyphs were aimed at the priests, the Demotic script at the officials, and the Greek letters at the foreign rulers of the time. If you like, the Rosetta Stone served as kind of a royal homage. The texts tell of all the great deeds accomplished by Pharaoh Ptolemy V. The Silver Pharaoh as the third pharaoh of the 21st dynasty, Sisens, I ruled between the years of 1040 and 994 BC. During his reign, the king built magnificent temples dedicated to the gods Mut, Amun, and Krones. In 1940, the French archaeologist Pierre Monte managed to rediscover the tomb of the powerful ruler in Tanis. In addition to the king, his wife, a prince, and an important priest were laid to rest in it. In detail, after his death, Sisens, I was not placed in just one, but in three sarcophagi. The first coffin was made of rose granite and originally belonged to Pharaoh Manepta. Beneath it slumbered a black granite sarcophagus, also reused, that encased the object that eventually gave Sisens his official nickname, a coffin of pure silver adorned with precious gold ornaments. While the sarcophagi and precious grave goods are still in amazing condition after all this time, the king mummy was not so lucky. It had already been completely disintegrated by the time the tomb was opened. Unfinished Obelisk To get closer to this exciting mystery, it is worth taking a closer look at some of the ancient structures. First of all, let's take a look at the famous unfinished obelisk located in Aswan near the Sudanese border. Historians suspect that it was ruler Hatshepsut who approved the construction of the magnificent stone pillar. If the object had been completed, it would have become the largest obelisk of antiquity with a height of almost 42 meters and a weight of around 1170 tons. In the end, Two urgent questions arise. Which tools were used by the Egyptians to shape the massive stone monument? And how were the workers going to manage to erect the structure, which weighed several tons? The majority of archaeologists believe that round dolerite hammers were the most important tools of that time. Basically, 
In order to beat a material into shape, it is always advisable to use a tool that is harder than the object that is being processed. In the case of rose granite, of which the unfinished obelisk is made, this is not the case. In fact, both materials are roughly the same hardness. Bronze, the other tool used in ancient Egypt, is in turn significantly softer than rose granite. Another point that puzzles some experts is the small area of the trench in which the obelisk was machined. There was very little space there to perform hard machine strokes. Therefore, some researchers are sure that the ancient workplace provides an authentic impression of which methods could not be used for processing. Conversely, it also gives an indication of the unique technical level of Egyptian architecture, which, however, eludes our understanding. To this day, we have never determined how much a remarkable piece of artwork was created. By all means, the tools to craft such a perfect specimen simply didn't exist at that time. Hatshepsut's Tomb Where is the mummy of the ancient Egyptian pharaoh Hatshepsut? The exciting question remained unanswered for decades. Before the Egyptian Minister of Education, Baruch Husne announced an absolute world sensation in 2007. According to this, a team of experts managed to identify the queen's mummy using DNA analysis and a CT scan. In detail, it was a body that was found in the Valley of the Kings in the early 20th century. The detailed investigation revealed that Hatshepsut probably lived to be 35 and died of cancer or complications from diabetes. In the meantime, however, the identification has been questioned again. According to this, a single tooth which is attributed to the queen does not fit into the gap in the mummy's upper jaw. So it was that a widespread theory once again receives new fuel. The pharaoh was allegedly murdered for political reasons, and her body was then cleared out of the way. Electromagnetic Energy A few years ago, researchers announced a real sensation. Electromagnetic energy can be generated inside and below Cheops Pyramid. In our modern, everyday life, electromagnetic fields are a constant companion. It doesn't matter whether we're using our mobile phones, using a microwave, or sunbathing. The invisible energy surrounds us practically everywhere. Using a theoretical model, the experts calculated that using the electromagnetic fields can be concentrated under the ground and inside the Great Pyramid. However, it should be mentioned that this is a purely theoretical study that requires certain assumptions. This indeed, among other things, that the structure does not hide any other unknown cavities and that the building material is distributed in the same way everywhere. Extraterrestrial Jewelry The fact that iron jewelry was found in the ancient Egyptian tomb does not sound like a sensation at first. However, the discovery is made all the more exciting when we realize that the material used was literally not from this world. A scientific study proved that the iron in the pearls was extracted from a meteorite. In our days, iron is considered a rather practical, not particularly valuable material. In ancient Egypt, however, the metal was more valuable than gold and precious stones. For a long time, the inhabitants of the pharaohs were unable to smelt iron. The rare cases when the material fell from heaven to earth like a gift from the gods were all the more significant. Bubastis Forget the hilarious cat videos circulating the internet these days. When it comes to the question of cat worship, no other people can match the ancient Egyptians. The city of Bubastis was considered the cult center for the goddess Bastet. Within mythology, the cat goddess was considered the daughter of the sun god Ra. It should therefore come as no surprise that numerous bronze cat figures and even large cat cemeteries have been found in the ruins of Bubastis. After their death, many cats were specially transported to Bubastis, mummified and buried in holy graves. All right, folks, now it's your turn. What fascinates you about ancient Egypt? And which discoveries presented fascinated you the most? Let us know in the comments below. Please show us with a like and a subscription that you enjoyed our insight into the mysterious world of the inhabitants of the pharaohs. And with that, thanks for watching. Take care and see you next time.